the relative experience uh, on Eric, and this is also known as the familiar this session as well. Uh, and before we begin, I just want to let this slide hang up there for a few or more seconds for you to enjoy. And now we can move on to today's agenda. Yeah. 
program, uh, how the repository is laid out. Uh, you get a topic for bits. If I make a change in hotspot, and I make a change in the JDK, I can now commit to this one atomic commit. Previously, they were done in different repositories, so we have the correlated changes, uh, but now it's one commit going into the project. Uh, we also have one hash for one given commit, describing the entire state uh, of the project at any given time, which is great if you want to describe that, yeah, I'm working on a change here that applies to this commit. You're going to have to describe one commit in one repository. Previously, you have to describe eight different hashes or eight different commits. If you want to say what you work on type 2. Uh, now, not only has uh, we done work on our side, Mercurial Hopsby has done tremendous work in 2017. Uh, Mercurial is approximately releasing every three months uh, new features into new HD releases. And the latest one, 4.5, is just around the corner. So, a few things that I think really stand out during 2017. Uh, is that the story around editing local commits and history is much better nowadays in Mercurial. You have commands now such as amend, unamend, uncommit, split, strip, is that it, rebase, and shell. Also, you can in a safe way change your history so that it becomes nicer to work with before you push it up street. Uh, the interface has improved. We are getting some extensions moving into core Mercurial. We see that the, the pager extension is moving to ui.pager. Uh, the color extension is also available in ui.color setting. Uh, show has been introduced, a new plugin for getting a better overview of the work. Graph log for getting a better look at the history. And the performance has also been greatly improved. And for those of you working on OpenLK, I can highly recommend the FS monitor extension, which uses Watchman and therefore get five notifications when things have changed. So if you run commands such as HG status or HG diff, uh, they will execute much, much faster. Now, just to throw it up there, this is actually my uh, HGRC, my configuration file that I use. I'm working there, and this applies to Mercurial 4.5. Uh, I put my OpenADK username in there. Uh, I turn on the page name and uh, color uh, settings so I get a better output and a nicer environment in my terminal. I enable a bunch of extensions. <laughs> some of these are experimental. Uh, some are more stable, but to me they're all vital right to my workflow at least. And if you want to get more into the nitty gritty details of this, you can comment on me afterwards. So with that, once you have the source code, what are you going to do with it? Yes, you want to build it. So let's move on to building a bit. Since around September 2016, the so-called new build system has been in place <laughs> and is used for all the code. Uh, so nowadays you just type bash configure and then make and you will build the product. Uh, the great thing is that configure is actually very helpful. If you are missing something at the tendency uh, somewhere, uh, it will help you out in a good way. For example, here I removed the C++ compilers from my Debian system. Uh, so configure will tell me I could not find a suitable C++ compiler, but since it knows that I'm running Debian, it suggests that maybe you should go ahead and actually get install uh, the build center package, which provides a C++ compiler. Uh, the documentation has been greatly improved for the building, and you will now find it in a markdown file in the doc directory uh, in the OpenNK repository. Now, one thing that has always been a little bit uh, problematic uh, for those of you working on sort of the latest mainline version of JDK, completely new features, bug fixes, has been finding a proper boot JDK. So, if you want to build OpenNK, you do should require a JDK image to bootstrap the build process. And, for example, for building OpenNK 9, you need a JDK 8 distribution. Uh, and it can be a little bit more to find a suitable boot JDK when you're working. For example, uh, the JDK JDK repository currently requires JDK 9, it might soon require JDK 10. And the issue is that a lot of Linux distributions do not package that recent JDKs. And uh, the org JDK, although available, is still proprietary. Now, the great news here, as Mark announced, uh, is that upstream build, binary builds of OpenJDK open under the details that we find available. Uh, you can find the builds at jdk.java.net slash 9 for OpenJDK 9 builds. And this makes for excellent boot JDKs for your build process. So we actually try this out. So now we're going to build from scratch on Debian 9, just like a middle mm -hmm. system. It is thanks to the consolidation, a single HD code command to get all the source code. Uh, we see the internet directory. Uh, we use uh, wget 
to get a good JDK, a GPL license, finally built, a good JDK uh, from the download of Java.net. And we use that as a good JDK when we configure, and then we try to make images. So in five steps, I have a completely properly built open JDK image. And you know, probably if you're doing this on a vanilla web you're going to miss a few packages, but again, configure is here to help you and will guide you. So you just rinse and repeat a few times, and then you're good. You're going to have a properly built open JDK image built on your machine. And there has been a lot of developer experience improvements within the system, and there are improvements overall. <laughs> Uh, to the main files of the build system, but there are a few developer experience improvements in there. For example, the debug symbols are no longer sick by default. So if you're working on hotspot and it will crash when you work on your picture, you can now much more easily debug it in DVD. Uh, the font config library is no longer bundled with OpenAK. I know that this is good news for the packages out there. So we have distributions you can now provide more easily a proper font config package. Uh, the compiler errors are repeated at the end of the build output. You no longer have to scroll multiple pages of output to find that one little test recompilation error that caused your build to go over. Uh, another build feature is you were maybe working on your own tools, so doing some scripting on your own, is that all compiler commands are available in dot command line files for each source code files. That means that if you want to look at the exact command that was used to produce the, for example, .o file or the .cpk file, you can find that in either the .dot command line file uh, with the same name as the source file. And uh, finally, but not the least at all, the run test target was introduced. And this I actually want to look a bit more deeper into and show you because this has improved my workflow a lot uh, since this was introduced. So, run test is a new top level main target called run that test. And it's used to execute all the different kinds of regression tests we have in OpenAK. Uh, so you type make, run that test, and then you set the test variable to whatever kind of test you want to execute. You can set it to a single test file, you can set it to a test group, a configuring test, you can set it to a directory containing multiple test files. It supports uh, all the test frameworks we make use of in OpenAK, and particularly Gatorade and Google Test, and uh, it can run there's actually anything you provided in the, the, the looks like tests. So you, in the first example here, we're going to run the tier one test. <coughs> it's uh, a tier of tests that are really good for sound testing. Uh, so we type make, run that test, test equals tier one. Now if you do this a lot, there are also a short annotation for running a suite of tests. So you can just take, type make, run that test, dash tier one. And in the other example here on the bottom of the slide, we want to run all the GC tests in the hotspot, in the test hotspot gateway GC directory. Uh, so then we just set in the test variable to test hotspot gateway GC, and run test will find all the gateway tests in this, in this directory and execute them for it correctly. Now, correct error is important because run test, uh, there are, it's not that easy to do this to run all the tests in a proper way. And run test will do this for you. Uh, it will ignore tests that are listed in the list of TXT because those tests might have an error or there might be something going on with them. They might be unstable for a little period of time. And they are listed in the problem list of TXT and they will be properly ignored. For example, if you execute uh, all the tests in the directory, you will not run those that should be ignored. Uh, it always uses failure handlers, so the test fails. Uh, a few actions will kick in, maybe you will get a core file or you will do some analysis. Those will be run. It always uses a fresh clean directory when running on the test. This is important if you run gateway tests. Uh, it uses multiple cores if that's available on the computer to speed up the execution of running all the tests. And it adds a correct JVM flag for each test appropriately. Uh, but it doesn't work. I'm sorry, I didn't use for sales management. Uh, you can pass options to the underlying test runner and or test framework. On the slide here, we're passing the repeat equals minus one option to the Google test test runner. Uh, and you can also pass uh, more specific uh, gateway options to the gateway if you have that need. Uh, there's extensive documentation available in under docs.testing.ml. And if you want to use this feature, it's very important that you pass that that we gateway to configure because one test needs to know where to find a JQuery image uh, so you can find a JQuery binary and use it as a test runner for executing your test. 
Now, this last bit will lead us into the next section about testing, because getting a hold of a proper JQA image hasn't always been the easiest. And if you want to use this new awesome feature run test, you need to have the proper JQA image to have that uh, with JQA to configure. Now, building JQA used to be a little problematic. Uh, Java help, uh, dependency of JQA, was only available in an ancient subversion repository. Uh, JQA harness, another dependency of JQA, actually required a proprietary library. Uh, the third part of the dependencies for JQA were not properly specified with what version should I choose, where should I get it from. Uh, the third part of the dependencies, if you did manage to find out the version, you would realize that they were a bit outdated, and not only outdated, they were actually incompatible with each other. So you, you would have a pretty hard time getting a correctly built JQA version. Uh, the good news is that all this has been fixed. Uh, so nowadays, you only need to clone the JQA repository, uh, see the it, ensure that you have a JDK8 image on your workstation. I'm running Debian, so I just can't get installed open JDK8 uh, JDK. And then I use the new uh, build all script. I run bash, make build all, and I pass it to the directory of the JDK8 image. And I will automatically get a properly built JDK image. The script will download, verify, and build required third party tools if there's something needed from. Uh, from OpenAK, those will be downloaded from h.openAK.com.net, verify that it's being downloaded correctly, build it, and uh, also if you have, you have multiple third party yards that we depend on, those will be downloaded from Maven Central and also verified with checksum that we got the right bits down to your computer. And the great news here is of course that if you use build the world to build JQA, you will get an image that is very suitable for passing the data that we get to configure. So now not only can you build from scratch on that line, uh, thanks to the new build the script for JQA, you can actually build and run tests in very few commands on a from scratch on that line. So get the source code, a single AG film command in the detail directory, and when you invoke configure, make sure that you pass that uh, detailed license of the cable available on screen, and also pass that that the JQA to your recently built JQA image. And now when you run make run dash test tier one, not only will you get a proper OPNK image as a result, but you will also run all the tier one standard tests on that OPNK image to do at least get some kind of uh, verification that they seems to hold together. But uh, there's been more going on in the last year, thanks to the consolidation effort, when we consolidated all these different repositories, we could take the opportunity to fix a little issue we had, because Gateway, when we write the Gateway test, we make use of helpers, asserts that are available in the test library, uh, but well, Postal's going to write gateway tests, and the AK developers also going to do the right gateway tests. So we have duplicate copies of this test, uh, test library in two different repositories. Now that the repositories have been consolidated, we could take the opportunity to merge those test libraries into one. And here you get asserts, you get tools for handling processes, uh, you get platform helpers, etc. And if you want to get started and maybe write a the gateway test, you can find information you need on the gateway homepage. I know that there are quite a few hospital developers in here, and those of you uh, may write the Zipos class in your day to day job, uh, working on Hotspot. Uh, Google Test has been available for quite some time, providing unit tests in Zipos class for Hotspot. Uh, so on the slide here, I just wanted to show you a very small unit test uh, for uh, Hotspot. Uh, we start off, it's a regular HTTP file, and as for all files in Hotspot, we in tune uh, pre compile to start with, uh, then we in tune the necessary headers. And then comes a small difference where we include unit test of HTTP. And we use a macro called test VM to set up our test. And this little test will just ensure that a newly created instance of the G1 analytics class is actually initialized correctly. If you want to get started, the Google test option documentation applies equally well to uh, the OpenNK tests and providing that. There are a few minor details that differ, particularly around the test macros. So we have redefined it a little bit to suit our needs. If you use the test macro, you say that my test will run fine. 
without even having an initialized KVM. This is great. If you do require an initialized KVM for a test to execute, you can use a test via macro, but you would rather share a JVM to make the test execute faster. If you need an isolated separate JVM for a unit test, uh, then you can use the test other VM. And if you want to check that the JVM actually exits with an assert, you can use a test via an assert macro to write such a test negative test. And remember, always make the human test of this. This is the last thing to, in your CPU. You that this has to do with some macros and to manage the So let's now see if we can put all this information together into one, hopefully, coherent workflow. So if you want to fix a bug or work, work on a feature, you start off by doing the single HTTP command to get the source code down. Uh, you might want to create a branch for the <coughs> issue you want to work on. So you create a new branch with material. Uh, you could run configure, and here it's uh, pretty, at least I find it efficient to name. There's a support for build profiles in the build system, so you can have multiple build directories for a single repository, and it's quite appropriate to name them after the branch you're working on, so you can quickly switch branches, branches and just doing incremental builds all the time. Uh, so here I'm going to name my build profile the same name as the HD branch and the issue I'm working on. Of course, I'm going to pass my JDRAG image to dash dash to JDRAG. I'm going to pass the path to my downloaded JPM to binary build for KDK as the boot JDK. Uh, I'm going to do some hacking. I'm going to write some tests, of course. Everyone writes tests for the new features and bug fixes. Uh, I'm going to commit, and then I'm going to run those tests locally. And here I can now use make, and I need to provide to make which configuration, which build profile you want to run. Do I pass the configure name variable, set it to my uh, configure to my launch name? And now we're going to run the tier 1 and tier 2 tests to do some standard testing and checking. Now, as uh, Mark announced, uh, we do have a re re release sort of, the submit repository. Uh, so you can now, to your HG configuration file for this repository, add the pops to both the submit repository and the sandbox repository. So to do some final testing, uh, remember, as Mark says, there's some we do traffic to using these services. So please run as much testing you can locally, but for the final testing, when you want to do it on multiple platforms, uh, you can push your launch to the submit repository. And then if you want to share the code with other developers, get some feedback, uh, you can push it to the sandbox repository, so it can be easily viewed by other developers. And of course, if you finally want to get it upstream, you do a web grab and you send an email to the link to that web so it can be discussed on the main list and finally approved. So what are we looking for towards uh, the next year? Uh, in the pipe, we uh, have one small feature that I think is pretty cool, which is a new make command called compile commands. So those of you that have been working with C++ a lot, or in more recent years, might know of the CMake build system uh, that conveniently creates a compile commands or JSON file for you. Uh, this file contains, for every CMakeCD file, it will contain the exact uh, command line that was run and executed to compile that file, which can then be hooked into a lot of tooling. This has been sort of inofficiently standardized for signal plus tools to use to find out exactly what the binds should be set to what when compiling a particular source file. This means that we can get much better integration with tools such as the C9 tools in the C9 suite, and also C querying to get some completion, etc. for our signal plus work. And uh, please uh, join us in all this work. Uh, what can we improve in all these developer experience tools? What can we fix? If something is working well, please provide that feedback too. Without the hearing, things are actually working. Uh, and if you want to contribute, please, and this does not require any super JVM skills or I need to be some language designer of some sort. Uh, start hacking on the cool tools, maybe the version of the cool tools. Uh, if you want to work on the make files, that would be greatly appreciated too. Or just uh, write a test or two to see if things are holding together and get into that. And uh, keep in touch with us. Uh, as I said, join the open communication channel on irc.org.net or send an email to CoCoStep and just introduce yourself or uh, you know, tell us if something isn't working. So thank you very much.